welcome to the second video in chapter six. In this video, we're going to talk about curved arrows and how that relates to reaction mechanisms. So we're gonna focus on the second point here. If you haven't already reviewed Bronsted, Lowry acids and bases, stop and do that now. Recall that when we talked about resonance, we talked about using curved arrows to represent the flow of electrons. Remember that we moved a pair of electrons using an arrow, and we went to something that could accept those electrons. In a lot of cases, it was a positive charge or an empty p orbital. And remember that the direction of our arrow was important because we are moving the electrons, not the charge. Remember that when we were doing this, our overall charge of the molecules does not change, and that the products of the electron flow arrows must obey the rules for proper Lewis structures. So now we're gonna apply curved arrows to some of the reactions that we've been doing. Let's start with this first example here. In the previous video, we talked about how a Bronsted-Lowry base accepts a proton and a Bronsted-Lowry acid donates a proton. Let's walk through how we might represent this reaction with curved arrows. If you're looking at this example here, notice that it looks like the hydroxide went and picked up this hydrogen over here. That means that this new bond that's formed came from a lone pair on hydroxide. I drew that out in red so you can see that what's happening is hydroxide is picking up that hydrogen there and forming the bond. So that lone pair on hydroxide became a new bond attached to that H on hydrochloric acid. Well, we know that the hydrochloric acid had to break a bond because hydrogen can't have two bonds. So what happened over here on this end of things? The bond between the H and the chlorine, and I've highlighted that in green there, that became a lone pair over here on Cl minus. So that means that when that bond broke, those electrons went to the chlorine. So that's how we would represent the flow of electrons for that reaction using curved arrows. As we just covered, we can use curved arrows to show hydroxide forming a bond to HCl and then the HCl bond breaking and those electrons are going to Cl minus. Let's do our check to make sure that we follow these two rules. Notice the overall charge is the same. On the left, we have a negative one charge. On the right, we have a negative one charge. So we followed that first rule, overall charge on all molecules involved does not change. Let's also check to make sure that our products followed rules for proper Lewis structures and we did that. We don't have any weird things like too many bonds to hydrogen, too many bonds to carbon. So we're good there, we followed both of our rules. Let's look at another arrow pushing example. In this example here, you can see that the lone pair on the nitrogen is lost and it is being used to form a bond to the hydrogen over here. You can see the blue hydrogen on the left that's attached to water is now bonded to the nitrogen. So let's draw that out. That lone pair there I'm gonna cover in blue and that's gonna form a bond to the blue hydrogen. That means on the right, that bond there that I just highlighted in blue is the one that we just formed. Also the oxygen hydrogen bond is going to break and that is going to become a lone pair on the oxygen. And you can see that we did that correctly because in the bottom here we can see the arrow going from the lone pair on the nitrogen and the hydrogen oxygen bond breaking and those electrons are going to the oxygen. Let's look at some more arrow pushing examples. In this example here, 
we have a carboxylic acid on the left, which is picking up a proton from our acid. If we draw the electrons, you can see the red pair of electrons is coming over there and forming a bond to that hydrogen. That becomes the red bond shown over on the right. When we do that, we have to break a bond. So the hydrogen-oxygen bond, those electrons are going to go to the oxygen and they become the orange lone pair on the right. And if we remember from Brodstead-Lowry definitions, our base is accepting a proton, which makes sense, and our acid is donating the proton. So all of that's good. Also notice that our charges balance. We have a positive charge on the left and a positive charge on the right. Here's one more example. Now the carboxylic acid is acting as the acid, and the base is hydroxide. So we're gonna draw an arrow from that pink lone pair that's going to form a bond with the blue hydrogen. That becomes our bond over here on the right. And then the hydrogen can't have two bonds, so we need to break a bond. And so the oxygen-hydrogen bond is going to break, and those electrons are going to go to the oxygen. That becomes the red lone pair on the right there. Again, we check to make sure that our charge is balanced. We have an overall negative charge on the left and an overall negative charge on the right. And this concludes our video on arrow pushing in acid-base reactions.